Brothers, strap yourselves in. Because our worst fears and analysis is coming true. They have dropped the hammer and they are coming for our guns. They're calling for open, complete banning of handguns, rifles, and anything that is not black ball and powder. They are calling for it everywhere. They are hitting and they are hitting hard. On CNN, MSNBC, everywhere, they have had, uh, again, gaggles of foreigners like Piers Morgan and others come on and say, ban our guns. Michael Moore has desecrated the Constitution Bill of Rights and said, basically, get rid of it. Bloomberg, ladies and gentlemen, and nobody's calling him on this. Now, I'm going to tell the criminals like Bloomberg and the rest of them something. You're on notice, scum. You've picked on the spirit of 1776, and you may think, just because you've drugged and dumbed down and got half the public in a trance, that you're going to win this. But you don't have at least 70 to 80 million people in this country that know exactly who and what you are criminal. And it is going to be your arrogant, chutzpah-filled evil, your bravada, that is going to bring down your new world order. That goes for Obama and the globalists and the big mega banks that run this country. People aren't going to give you the guns, and you think that's going to start a civil war, and you're just going to sit it out. We are going to identify who did this. You understand? If you get what you want and trigger this civil war, you are going to be brought to justice, okay? Let me tell you, driving in this morning... After reading these articles and hearing the clips on local radio and hearing the local host defend it and saying it's time to turn the guns in on a conservative talk station and having uh, Rupert Murdoch and all of them come out for banning semi-autos, they're coming, folks. They're coming. They're coming for our guns. Is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Since the Colorado theater shooting, most of the media has wanted to jump all over the issue of whether or not AR-15 rifles and assault weapons should even be sold to the public. It is the same story every time an incident like this happens. Most of the arguments wind up centered on the Second Amendment. So what was the Second Amendment really about, and what does it protect? Well, I give up my gun when everybody else does. Understand? Doesn't that make sense? Well, <laughs> Doesn't that make sense? I mean, if, you were to, if, if there were guns here, would you be on to be the only person without one? So, you, so, so do you carry guns Not routinely at home? I mean, you have, gun, you have a gun at home? Yeah, it's legal in the United States. It's part of our Constitution. You know, the right to bear arms is because that's the last form of defense against tyranny. Not to hunt, to hunt. It's to protect yourself from the police. And do you see any link between that and these sorts of incidents? No. Nah, not really. You know what I'm saying? If somebody wants to kill people, you know, they don't need a gun, do it. Makes it easier though, doesn't it? Not really. You can use, uh, you can strap explosives on your body. They do that all the time. So when there's the inevitable backlash Mm -hmm. of the anti-gun lobby as a result of this incident, as it always is. Well, that's not well, going to change anything in the United States. Anything. No. The United States is based on guns, you know. Like KRS says, you'll never have justice on stolen land. So it's not going to change. Uh, to be clear, the militia is not regular military. They were farmers and blacksmiths who went about their daily lives. But notice that the amendment says this is for the security of a free state. According to the 1828 Dictionary and other historical documents of that day, they refer to a state as an independent nation. The Second Amendment was put in place to remind the newly formed federal or general government that each state's citizenry would be armed and ready to defend themselves should the need arise. Remember, the United States was a plural term. So what you need to know? If people like Pierce Morgan want to have a real discussion on the Second Amendment, then it needs to be an honest discussion. The Second Amendment is about tyranny, not about hunting or about sport. Every time one of these things happens, Gabrielle Giffords last year, this shooting here, there's an outrage, and then very quickly it, it dissipates. The American people quite quickly go back to their normal lives, and they don't demand action in the way that I would expect them to. Why do so many Americans not feel angry enough to demand further gun control?
and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. So. Well, I would take it one step further. I don't understand why the police officers across this country don't stand up collectively and say, we're going to go on strike. We're not going to protect you unless you, the public, through your legislature, do what's required is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. By leaving guns in the hands of people who shouldn't have them and letting people who have those guns buy things like armor-piercing bullets and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. I, like most Americans, believe that the Second Amendment guarantees an individual the right to bear arms. I think we recognize the traditions of gun ownership that passed on from generation to generation, that hunting and shooting are part of a, a, a cherished national heritage. But I also believe that a lot of gun owners would agree that AK-47s belong in the hands of soldiers, not in the hands of criminals. And just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. And just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. That they belong on the, the battlefield of war, not on the streets of our cities. I believe the majority of gun owners would agree that we should do everything possible to prevent criminals and fugitives from purchasing weapons, that we should check someone's criminal record before they can check out a gun seller. That a mentally unbalanced individual should not be able to get his hands on a gun so easily. for change and then making sure that we have a president I cannot put my partisanship aside a democratic president who will take that office and use it to protect the streets and the kids that grow up on those streets and make sure that we once again have an assault weapon ban a Brady bill with the full force of the law on the land because we need somebody in the Oval Office that moves this Congress we had an election about change people are clear about the special interest they are tired of that gridlock the special interest cause in Washington and I think the most simple thing we can do and we've got to make this a number one issue as a test vote and then take it into the election that is if you are on the no-fly list because you are known as maybe a possible terrorist you cannot buy a handgun in America you're on that no-fly list, your access to the right to bear arms is canceled because you're not part of the American family. You don't deserve that right. There is no right for you. And after the horrible shootings this week, it's now open season on the gun lobby, gun owner and Second Amendment advocates. And it's about time that they fire back with a logical message that, spe that speaks rather the truth, and that is that the Supreme Court in Heller 
in 2008 made it clear that the Second Amendment is not about hunting or self-defense or being a part of a militia. It's an absolute right. And this casuistic, sophistic, and specious reasoning that inspires an almost knee-jerk clamor of gun control is to stop in stanter for too long clowns like Ted Nugent and Sarah Palin have become synonymous with the Second Amendment and they cause more harm than good. The most silenced and marginalized voice in this country is the American gun owner, the law-abiding, traditional enthusiast. Who speaks for her? And now with the UN Small Arms Treaty, the anti-gun movement is now going global. Why? Because it is the absolute goal of every government to disarm its people, if they're smart. The anti-gun movement is virulent in this country and very often and every time something tragic happens, the first thing they do is, pardon the pun, put the gun owner in the crosshairs. They exploit horror and death through casuistry. And just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Just let me make sure that you understand I'm not here representing the NRA. I'm not even a member. Okay? Secondly, I'd like to say that uh, in your opening statements, um, you commented that uh, you commented specifically on my testimony, saying that basically it had nothing to do with this issue. And I had to chuckle because then I noticed you had uh, Mr. Brady up here who was hit not with an assault weapon but with a 22 caliber revolver. But I was given a gun by a friend when I was 21 to carry in my purse for self-defense, and I was taught how to use it. A couple of years ago. My parents and I went to a cafeteria in Texas on a bright, sunny day. We weren't in a dark alley where we weren't supposed to be. And as you all know the story, this madman drove his truck through the window. And he began shooting. Now, I'd like to make something clear. I hear all this talk about how many bullets can go in a clip. I've been there. I can tell you it doesn't matter. It takes one second to switch out a clip. You can have one bullet or a hundred bullets. It doesn't matter, guys. I've been there. He goes, dump, dump, just like that. That's not enough time to rush me. And I reached for my purse. He was maybe 12 feet away. You know, is it possible my gun could have jammed? Sure. Is it possible I could have missed? Sure. But I can tell you I've hit much smaller targets at much greater distances. But then I realized that a couple of months earlier, I had made the stupidest decision of my life. I took my gun out of my purse and left it in my car. Because as you well know, in the state of Texas, it's sometimes a felony offense to carry a gun in your purse. As I mentioned, I'm not really mad at the guy that did this. And I'm certainly not mad at the guns that did this. They didn't walk in there by themselves and pull their own triggers. The guy that did it was a, a, a lunatic. That's like being mad at a, a rabid dog. I'm mad at my legislators for legislating me out of the right to protect myself and my family. As far as these so-called assault weapons, you say that they don't have any defense use. You tell that to the guy that I saw on a videotape of the L.A. riots, standing up on his rooftop, protecting his property and his life from an entire mob with one of these so-called assault weapons. Tell me that he didn't have a legitimate self-defense use. Just one final statement. I'm, I've been sitting here getting more and more fed up with all of this talk about these pieces of machinery having no legitimate sporting purpose, no legitimate hunting purpose. People, that is not the point of the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is not about duck hunting. And I know I'm not going to make very many friends saying this, but it's about our rights, all of our rights, to be able to protect ourselves from all of you guys up there. And just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Here is uh, the whole exchange on Fast and Furious, and then both of them with their anti-gun agenda and Obama saying he does want to ban your semi-autos, that's what assault weapons ban is, and wants to designate you psychologically bad to take your gun. So, uh, you know, for me, this is the one point where I was like, well, at least Romney says he's not coming for my guns now.
even though I probably can't believe him, he can be held to that commitment. But Obama's telling me he's coming for my guns, and I'm going to just stay out of this. And maybe we should. Maybe it just it, get Obama in there and just let him try to take the country over. And I, if I was the police and military, I'd be asking myself one thing. Are you ready for this civil war? Because they're going to send you in against people, and they're going to have, you know, blowing up farmhouses and shooting people, and, yeah, these terrorists got it. You're going to be able to wipe out the first groups of patriots you go after. But then people aren't going to be waiting for you at their houses. They're going to come after you. And, and, and I know you're training for that. I mean, you really want a bunch of global banker collectivist criminals to have you start a civil war in America. This is really what you want. You really want to, you really want to sign on with the devil. Because I'm telling you, folks, that's where this is headed. This isn't a game. Let's go ahead and uh, start going to the uh, clip. Here's the out-of-control, domesticated woman uh, who thinks guns are bad in the hands of the citizens. Here it is. President Obama, during the Democratic National Convention in 2008, you stated you wanted to keep AK-47s out of the hands of criminals. What has your administration done? Dead pause. Or They're not. AK-47s, moron. They're semi-automatic variants. And by the way, that's good they're semi-auto. Your, your obsession with full auto. They're not AK-47s. They're semi-automatic versions. And most crimes aren't committed with those. By the way, Obama says that. He says he wants the handguns. Yeah, I know you want the handguns. Harder to get those away from people at checkpoints. Let's go ahead and go back to this. To limit the availability of assault weapons. You know, we're a nation that believes in the Second Amendment. And, and I pause again. Amendment. Back it up. I just every bit of it's bull. You believe in the Second Amendment. Kind of like he said he believes in small businesses when he says you didn't build that. But their new argument is the Second Amendment means you turn your guns in. Go back to it. I'm sorry. Go back to it. You know, we've got a long tradition of, of hunting and sportsmen. It's not about hunting. You know that, liar. People who want to make sure they can protect themselves. Uh, but... There have been too many instances during the course of my presidency where I've had to come. People can't protect themselves in Chicago or New York where you took their guns. Most recently, out in Aurora. Oh, you know, yeah, that just, thing you staged? Uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, actually. You don't fool me. Uh, I saw a mother who I had met at the bedside of her son. Can these people be any more theater. sheep like when you watch video of them? And her son had been shot through the head. And we spent some time and. We said a prayer. Oh, a prayer. And remarkably, about two months later, this young man and his mom showed up, and he looked unbelievable. Now he's manipulating Christians. What are you, Benny Hinn? But there were a lot of families who didn't have that good fortune and whose sons or daughters or husbands didn't survive. So my belief is that, A, we have to enforce the laws we've already got, Make sure that we're keeping guns out of the hands of criminals. By shipping Those them to Mexico? Mentally ill. We've done a much better job in terms of background checks, but we've got more to do when it comes to enforcement. But I also share your belief that weapons that were designed for soldiers in war theaters don't belong on our streets. to get a broader conversation about how do we reduce the violence generally. Part of it is... These control freaks hate the fact we that we have firearms and they can't do it just they didn't rush us. But part of it is also looking at other sources of the violence. Because frankly, in my hometown of Chicago, there's an awful lot of violence. And they're not using AK-47s, they're using cheap handguns. Is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. And so what can we do to intervene to make sure that young people... Uh, disarm people of Chicago so the criminals all go there? schools are working. That 
if there's violence on the streets, that working with faith groups and law enforcement, we can catch it before it gets out of control. That means having churches so spy on a, you. Is a comprehensive strategy. Part of it is seeing if we can get automatic weapons that kill folks in, in amazing numbers out of the hands of criminals and, and the mentally ill. Obama, you know you can't buy full auto weapons. And they used that, that poor woman, he's like, has crazed eyes when she talks about assault weapons, machine guns. I'm so sick of idiots know nothing about guns. Now, Obama knows all about them. He's lying, saying criminals have full auto. The only criminals that have full auto are the ones that got it from U.S. military personnel in black ops who were ordered to ship full auto into Mexico to destabilize that country. And the big U.S. banks and Western banks caught giving full autos and armored vehicles and planes to the drug dealers because they run the drug operations. Wells Fargo, Wachovia, they all got caught running the aircraft, funding the guns, all of it. Shut up when you talk about death and destruction and how you care about people. What a joke, Obama. What a joke. We all know about the CIA in MENA, Arkansas. We all know about Fast and Furious. We all know about Iran-Contra. Don't sit there and talk about some individual you know, you know, that got shot in the head and how terrible the automatic weapons are. The only people selling automatic weapons or giving them out are you. So you can blame our Second Amendment. Let's go back to him here. But part of it is also going deeper and seeing if we can get into these communities and making sure we catch violent impulses before they occur. Governor Romney, the question is oh, about yeah. assault weapons, AK-47s. Yeah, I, I'm not in favor of new pieces of They love the fact the public's dumb. It's funny to them to sit there and lie to everybody. Obama and Aleister Crowley and all those, you know, the moderator, they all know uh, that, that there's not fully auto out there. They all know that Fast and Furious ship guns into Chicago and Indianapolis and Tampa and other areas and it came out. They all know. It's just a sick joke to them, posing like they're the humanitarians. Let's play some more of uh, Mr. Placed on on guns and, and taking guns away or, or making certain guns illegal. We, of course, don't want to have automatic weapons, and that's already illegal in this country to have automatic weapons. Good job, Romney. What I believe is we have to do, as the president mentioned uh, towards the end of his remarks there, which is to make enormous efforts to enforce the gun laws that we have and to change the culture of violence we have. And you ask, how are we going to do that? And there are a number of things. He mentioned good schools. I totally agree. We were able to drive our schools to be number one in the nation in my state. And I believe if we do a better job in education, we'll, we'll give people the, the hope and opportunity they deserve and perhaps less violence from that. But let me mention another thing, and that is parents. We need moms and dads helping raise kids. Yo, wow. Wherever possible. Parents the, are the needed. Oh. Having two parents in the home, and that's not always possible. The state doesn't like Robert, that. Single moms, single dads. But gosh, to tell our kids that before they have babies, they ought to think about getting married to someone, that's a great idea. Oh, yeah. Because if there's a two-parent family, the prospect of living in poverty goes down dramatically. Yeah, four times. The opportunities that the child will, will be able to achieve increase dramatically. So we, we can make changes in the way our, our culture works to help bring people away from violence and give them opportunity and bring them in the American system. The, the, the greatest failure we've had with regards to, to gun violence in some respects is what what is known as Fast and Furious, ah. which was a program uh, uh, under this administration and how it worked exactly, I think we don't know precisely, but where thousands yeah, we of automatic and, and AK-47 type weapons were, were given to people that ultimately gave them to, to drug lords. They used those weapons against uh, against their own yeah, citizens Clinton did and that killed Americans. In 97, that the Chinese this was a, government this was a bring guns. Of the government. For what purpose it was put in place, I can't imagine. Head pause. One of the well, since you can't imagine, uh, I told you this over a year ago, uh, but ABC News uh, and uh, CBS earlier this year, uh, it was the memos have come out in Congress that it was to be blamed on the Second Amendment. And Obama went ahead and still did that, along with Holdren, Eric Holder. I mean, I am just tired of it. Let Let's go back to more of this, more of this disgustingness. The great tragedies related to violence in our society, which has occurred during this administration, which I think the American people would like to understand fully. It's been investigated to a degree, but, but the administration has, uh, has, a, uh, has carried out executive privilege to, to prevent all the information from coming out. I'd like to understand who it was that did this, what the idea was behind it. 
why it led to the violence. Thousands of guns going to Mexican Gen drug Governor. lords. Governor, if I could, the, the question was about these assault weapons that once were banned and are no longer banned. And just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Uh, I, I know that you signed a, a, an assault weapons ban when you were in Massachusetts. Obviously, with this question, you, you no longer do support that. Why is that, given the kind of violence that we see sometimes with these mass killings, uh, why is that that you've changed your mind? First of all, I think Governor Romney was for an assault weapons ban before he was against it. And he said that the reason he changed his mind was in part because he was seeking the endorsement of the National Rifle Association. So that's on the record. But I think that one area we agree on is the importance of parents and the importance of schools. Because I do believe that if our young people have opportunity, then they're less likely to engage in these kind of violent acts. The best thing I can tell you, Piers, is this. Mexico has strict gun control. You cannot own a gun in Mexico. And they had 20,000 people dead last year in the drug cartel wars. But Mexico has a very particular problem. In Drugs. I can right. cite you Britain, All right. average, well, well, let me just okay. throw it back at you. In Britain, for example, an average of 35 people a year are murdered with guns. In Germany, it's about 40 to 50. France, the same. Spain, the same. Italy, there's a pattern here. America, 11 to 12,000 a year. Yep. This country has more guns than anybody else yep. and more gun murders. Yeah. It, it's inarguable, isn't it? No. Because I was in the Philippines, physically, the day Ferdinand Marcos declared martial law and made himself a dictator. And the first thing that dictator did, he gave the people of the Philippines two weeks to turn in all their guns or it was the death penalty. Now, why would a dictator do that? Why would he make his number one priority when he took over as dictator to disarm the public? The Second Amendment is there so, and it was put in there not for hunting and fishing like they like to say. Because back when they did it, if you didn't hunt or fish, you didn't eat. It was put in there so the citizens would have the ability, if their government became oppressive, they could defend themselves against oppressive government. More and more, the world must turn its hopes to the legacy of the trials at Nuremberg and examine the sturdy instruments of justice forged there for new and inspired use in a world where justice is still too rare. No problem with an American believing that their right under the Constitution is that they can defend themselves, especially in their own home, if they're being attacked and they have a, a weapon. It's also That's against fine. government. I have a big problem with a disturbed young man, as we saw in Colorado, being able to buy 6,000 rounds of ammunition and a high-powered assault weapon and go into a movie theater and blow away 70 Americans. Let's remember, police can't stop crimes. Police show up after they're over. About this remember woman in Oklahoma that. who successfully defended herself under fundamental, natural, God-given, just natural law by using two firearms, a firearm, to defend herself in her home, her heart, to defend herself and her baby. And yet, this is probably the most staggering example of how many people successfully defend themselves to ward off felonies. I saw this as a prosecutor. Gary Kleck talked about it. John Lott talked about it. And the professional left, the anti-gun media, as you well know, Alex, does everything in its power to subvert, to, to, to hide this particular news. So before we get on, I just want to invite people, because this is an important message. There are people out there who use what you might call assault weapons and high-powered weapons to successfully defend themselves. What do the professional left and the anti, I hate to use these, these, these 
code words, but the victim disarmament crew acts like it was illegal that people were trying to break in with knives to steal her medication, which she's and she's with her baby. Uh, and so they say indict her, and they have the shocked headline teen widow who shot dead home intruder who wanted her dead 58 year old husband's meds won't face charges. They act like it's amazing that she's not in trouble. And what's also interesting to note is I don't know what these people would have suggested that she should have done to confront this fellow with a hunting knife, to use her feminine wiles, to disarm her with her rapier wit. Look, I'm telling you, I am by a native Floridian, second generation. In Florida, too, we could we get a lot of jokes about Florida, was absolutely ahead of the curve when it came to allowing carry permits. I had one for years, and crime dropped. I don't want to get off too much on that, but this is something, though, that it is not a, a conservative issue, a left issue. It's not about hunting. Our own Mayor Bloomberg is doing everything in his power to, to disarm, not just him, but a lot of people. But the idea of protecting your family, of yourself. She was in her home. And the very fact that there are people, Alex Jones, on this planet who want to debate the legitimacy of her defending her baby. I, 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 she wasn't out robbing anybody. She used a firearm to successfully keep these people. As one well, I mean, there was another case a few months ago in California. They said she should be arrested. You know, the woman calls the police. Uh, the, the 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 person is busting in, you know, has the weapon. Turns out they're you know long criminal history. She shoots him, and then there was a debate about should she have done what she did. And when he's coming in, she shoots him once, twice, three times. She was asking permission, and here's this woman again asking permission. If somebody's coming in your house with a big knife, I mean, my God. The Constitution, the Second Amendment, has nothing to do about hunting. The Second Amendment has nothing to do with plinking. The Second Amendment has nothing to do with going out and shooting cans off of a, of a wooden fence. It has to do with the fundamental ability of the citizenry, number one, to defend itself against the onslaught of a rogue government. This was the this is the basis of our country. That's number one. But number two, and you don't need the Constitution for this, it is common sense, it is axiomatic, it is obvious that when somebody poses a threat to you, and there are different, I know in, in Alex, we, we can argue, you know, if you're in your car, if we're in a stoplight, was I menacing, could I have pummeled a man of your brawn and girth, that's okay. When a woman is in her home, in a mobile home, by the way, not exactly the strongest of construction, you can presume that somebody means something nefarious. In addition, I want people within the sound of our voice to ask whether they have a castle doctrine in their home, in their state, whether they have the stand your ground doctrine, because a little bit of law, you know, normally you have to retreat. And it's common sense. You know, the law says, look, if you can possibly get away. Ben, but if you're in your badger hole, there's nowhere else you can go. You know, I see this all the time, but in England, where they've really expanded on this victim disarmament deal, I've seen cases where a thief falls through the window, the skylight, and so you're then charged. Or where a woman is being raped and the guy turns around and she shoves him you know, out a balcony window, three stories, and she's indicted. Or the farmer has a three-generation hidden shotgun the third time he's right. robbed and beaten up, so he shoots a guy with a shotgun, and, and they vitriolically send him to jail. This shows you have a criminal government that wants to fully rout the instinct of good people to defend themselves. You know, Alex, years ago, when I was in Florida, or as I call it, Florida, which is different from where people vacation, but I mean, we're talking, you know, Hillsborough County, Lafayette, you know, but we're talking very serious uh, hunters and cattlemen, and in Florida is not what people think. But in 1988 or 89, there was a glitch in the law when they passed this new um, Chapter 790, this new weapon statute, they did not have, for reasons nobody ever understood, but they did not replace a, a statute that prevented people from carrying basically six shooters down the street. So for eight or nine days, until they could call an emergency session in, for eight or nine days in the state of Florida, it was legal to walk down the street 
with revolvers and holding a shotgun because remember the law prefers that you not conceal the weapon so for eight days or nine days don't hold me to it but for a period of time at least a week in the state of florida it looked like dodge city so <laughs> think, well you would have therefore seen a concomitant you know a, a rise in crime on the contrary people at convenience stores were saying come on in coffee's on the house Let me be clear on this. I fully respect, I admire the American Constitution. And I understand that the purpose of the Second Amendment is to guarantee good American citizens the ability to defend themselves and their nation. 